It's like a boss. Do 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 do. Ba da ba ba da ba. I would, I went to my my favorite website that TED dot com because it always blows my mind with these fucking eggheads are working on. And every once in a while, it's something inspirational. And today I went on there, and uh, I'm looking at this fucking lady. And uh, named Sue Austin. She got sick, so now she's in a wheelchair, or she calls it a power chair. So uh, she was actually psyched get, to get in the wheelchair because I guess she was bedridden, and then she got in the wheelchair, and she was, like, psyched. She goes, I could fucking cruise down the street. You know, you know the wheelchairs they got now, like those old people have. They're not the same ones. Like, you, you know, I don't think we've experienced our first death yet, but if they make those fucking wheelchairs any faster, like there's – you know, there's going to be a lawsuit, you know? So anyway, she's flying down the street in, in, her, in her wheelchair, evidently having the fucking time of her life, feeling the wind in her face because anything's better than laying in that fucking bed under all those blankets. I could whiz around and feel the wind in my face again. Just being out on the street was exhilarating. So she's psyched, goes out in the world, having a great time. Of course, she's saying all this in an English accent. Feeling the wind on my face. Blimey. <laughs> All these cunts scattering about. Um. <laughs> so anyways, long story short, she's taken aback how everybody like almost like ignores her. You know what I mean? Which I try not to do when I meet people in wheelchairs. You know what I mean? Like you try to fucking you're, you're looking them in the eye. You're having a conversation, but you can't help but feel like you look you obviously you're looking down on them. Then it feels like this weird, like, cond- condescending thing. Like, hey, you down there, I'm talking to you up here, right? So what else are you going to do? You're going to squat down, and now they feel like a little kid, and you're going to tie their shoe or something? It's really weird. It should really be some sort of standing to wheelchair um, um, manners drawn up. You know what I mean? Would it be weird if you, th- if you sit down, too? <laughs> Or are you then mocking their condition? Because at the end of the conversation, you can get up and walk away. You know what I mean? And all you're trying to do is not hurt their fucking feelings. Um, so anyways, back to the lady in the wheelchair. So I don't know. I kind of fast forward through some of the video, right? Because I got to do this podcast. And um, she, I don't know, she got into s- diving or some shit. Oh, I know. Somehow she, she, I don't know, she just starts talking about fucking scuba diving. It showed that an arts practice can remake one's identity and transform preconceptions by revisioning the familiar. So, when I began to dive in 2005, I realised scuba gear extends your range of activity in just the same way as a wheelchair does. But the associations attached to scuba gear are ones of excitement and adventure, completely different to people's responses to the wheelchair. So I thought, I wonder what will happen if I put the two together. And now when you put that shit on... The apparatus that you go scuba diving with, all of a sudden, like the wheelchair, it alters your way you move around in the world. But scuba diving was, was, was looked, is looked upon as exciting. So I thought, what if I combined the two? I know this is a brutal accent. So she basically fucking put on a mask, a regulator. And a tank in the back, put some fins on the fucking wheelchair, and this lady had the balls, the fucking ovaries, if you will, to scuba dive. So they cut to her going through the ocean. She's got long hair. It's hanging out the back, floating. She's fucking in a wheelchair, sitting down, going through the ocean. It was beautiful and creepy all at the same fucking time. It's kind of frightening, I got to admit. It was a little bit frightening. It kind of reminded me a little bit of that movie Mama that's coming out, you know, with that fucking tree woman that raised those two kids. Two kids get lost in the woods, and then they find this, this fucking creepy woman, tree, dirty person. I don't know what the fuck it is, but I'm definitely seeing that movie because that movie, that movie better not disappoint me because uh, I saw the ads for that. Did you guys see the ads for that? Mama. You know, these two kids get lost in the fucking woods and this thing raises them. And then I guess the humans 
you know, find them. And they bring the two kids back. They were out there for like five fucking years. And evidently, uh, the fucking dirty mother from the woods is not happy that she lost her kids. So she comes back to get them. And um, once again, you people who are not into guns, <clears throat> you know, and you're against the NRA, I'll tell you right now. I would love to hear what you had to say when some fucking half a tree, half a woman, dirty fucking individual comes into your house from the woods after you find your kids because you somehow lost them out there for the last five fucking years, comes back into your house, and you're sitting there with a bread knife and an English muffin, and this fucking thing comes through the goddamn window. Huh? Wouldn't you want to have a semiotic assault rifle? Not trying to cause a debate. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. You know? Just trying to take a different angle on this <laughs> So anyways, this lady is in a fucking wheelchair scuba diving. All right? I'm terrified of the ocean. Absolutely fucking... I can't even say I'm terrified. I'm, I'm informed of the ocean. I know what's in it. I know some of what's in it. That's another thing, too. We don't even know everything that's in it. And, you're, and you can't see it, and you're going to go there. And you can't fucking breathe, so you've got to bring air with you. Yeah, that, that's a good idea going to fucking go someplace where I can't breathe. Don't worry. I brought some air. <laughs> I'm going to go where I can't fucking breathe. Everything's faster than me. And if it wants to, it might start eating me alive. But don't worry. I brought some air. Yeah, these fucking people, they're, they're out of their minds and they don't deserve to be rescued. I don't even know what I'm talking about this week. So anyways, this lady in the fucking wheelchair, she scuba dives now. And she can't move her fucking legs. And she has the fucking ovaries to go down there. And I, I, and I don't have the balls to do it. I'm absolutely blown away by her. But then on another side, she's kind of cheating. Because like if a shark comes at her, she could just sort of lean to one side. And all he's going to get is a mouthful of metal and, you know, <laughs> break all his teeth. <laughs> That would be great. Uh, you like that leg? Go ahead. Take a shot at it. And you just fucking lean. Shark comes in, fucking knocks out all his teeth. Uh, uh, fucking freaking out. Freak out a shark. Get him to put his little flipper over his mouth like a little kid who broke his front teeth. I don't know. If you see her, I know that they're trying to make it beautiful. But there's something about her long hair. The fact that she's sitting down. It's just weird. And it's creepy. Do you know I keep seeing that dirty mother, half a tree person uh, with the leaves in her hair? I actually, like the downstairs in my house, is it's just creepy. I don't know what it is. There's something that's creepy about it.